Dana, welcome back. Today we're continuing to work on the Fairy Journal series, the start to finish. My goal this week was to film every day because I really want to get this order finished, but it just didn't work out that way. It was a really busy week with lots of appointments and places to go and um, just it it just didn't work out so hopefully it won't be so many days in between videos because I vowed to not really work on this journal until uh, unless I'm filming so I did want to show you the cover that we finished together and I wanted to show you that I did go ahead and put paper on the inside of it isn't that gorgeous so this is our cover that we're working on I have not decided how I want to close it and I won't decorate the outside of it um, for a little bit. So, so where we're at is putting our signatures together. That's what's next. And so I have pulled some papers. I actually have to, I have to admit that I did go ahead and I had the signature all together. And then I thought, oh my gosh, I didn't film any of that. So that's why the papers you see are all folded in half already. So. Let me show you what I've done. Okay, I've picked a lot. It turned out, let me back up. Normally, when I put a signature together for a journal, I will go into my paper pads or whatever digital kit that I might be using, and I'll print if it's a digital, or I'll pull papers from a paper pad, typically they're card stock, and um, I'll pull roughly about six to seven pieces of cardstock for the signature. Um, this one has less. I only have four. Um, and they're from various um, paper pads. Um, except these two are Tim Holtz right here. The more vintage looking ones. Because I have several paper pads that have prints that I wanted to use that I knew I wanted to use in this journal and they were more um, like they weren't card stock they're more the uh, copy weight paper uh, the copy paper weight to paper and so I pulled a whole bunch of those because I just couldn't stop I had so many so um, I've got five of them here isn't that pretty I've got this one and this one and this one and this one. So again, I'm trying to stay with pinks and greens and kind of vintage. Um, so I've got how many of these? One, two, three, four, five. So I've got five of these and I've got four card stocks. So typically what I'll do is have like six pieces of cardstock and then maybe like three or four of the lighter weight paper. And then I move to coffee dyed paper. So I picked out about three or four pages because I happened to find a pink one. Um, so I've got four pages of coffee dyed paper. And that puts us at about 13 pages, I think. So there's four of these and five of these, that's nine. And yeah, so that puts us at 13 pages with the cardstock, lighter weight paper, and coffee dyed paper. So that's about 13. I try and keep my signatures around 15 to 17 pages um, because that then leaves me um, room to bulk it up with ephemera and stuff. So just as an example, let me pull a journal. This is one that I finished that I'll be doing a flip through of today. Um, and you see how it bulks up once you put stuff in it. And let's just see what we have here. So this is cardstock. So one, two, three and I'm not counting my little half sheets that I add any bags things like that so one two three this is four I will count the music because it's a full page five six seven 
8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So this was 14, not including any like half sheets, smaller sheets that I add in there. Okay. So here was a scrap that I found that I really liked. It's just a lighter weight paper. So I'm using that as kind of a different sized page. I've pulled a doily. Um, this is just a beautiful page out of a book that I have that I love the images of. So I pulled out this page. I've got some a page from a hymnal. I've got a small piece of ledger paper. I've got a paper bag that I've already cut the end off so it's open and ready to be folded. This is a dictionary page an Edith Holden page, and a full-sized music page, okay? So that will add to this pile and that would make 14 full pages. So that's how I pull things. I, um, you know, I have paper pads that I go through. So that's the first part. So I pull cardstock and then lighter weight paper of prints that I want to use. Then I pull out of my file cabinet where I keep all of my coffee dyed paper. I'll pull pages from that. And then I have on my bookcase, that's where I keep books that I typically go to that I put a page from them in most journals that I make. So I have those together. And, um, and so I'll just pull those books off my shelf flip through them and start tearing out the pages that I want. So that's from books. And then I always try and put a doily in. And again, this was just a scrap piece that I decided to put in. And then I'll go through where I keep all of my other paper, uh, other things that I include in journals, like um, bags and things like that. Um, the small ledger paper and I'll pull those and then I have those in a certain place um, in my area here and I'll pull from there and that's the logic and process that I go through when putting together a signature okay so I'm gonna put all of these kind of smaller kind of specialty papers aside and let's work on putting the signature together so I'm going to put these in piles. So I've got my copy paper, I mean my coffee dye paper. I have my cardstock here and I've got my lighter weight papers here. And I'm just going to kind of set them out to where I can see them. So the first thing I do when I'm looking at these things is I decide what do I want to be the first page that you see when you open the journal. So when you open the journal like this, what do I want to be the first thing? Typically it's cardstock, but not here. I love this as a lighter weight paper and I just love the pink and pink is her favorite color. So I want this to be the outside of my signature. And then what I do is I pick what's gonna be in the middle of the signature and I want that to be cardstock uh, not this, maybe this, definitely not this, and I think I like this, okay? So this I'm going to fold this way so that when the signature is in the center, this is what is in the center of the signature. And now I'll just build from there. What I'll do is take the rest of my um, cardstock and I'm just gonna place those in this is my middle so I'm gonna pull this out and set it aside and I'm just gonna place these in just like this all the cardstock I'm gonna put other papers in between okay alright so this is what we have okay so now I have four pieces of other printed paper the lighter weight and I have four pieces of coffee dye so I want to see how many spaces I have in between and if I have enough to put 
uh, lighter weight paper and a coffee dyed in between each of these. So let's see, one, two, three, and I don't. Oh, I do because the center. So four. Okay, so I'm going to pick a print and a coffee dyed to go in between each one of these pieces of cardstock here. So we'll do um, coffee dye first. And I'm, again, I've already had these folded in half. I think I want to put these butterflies in here. Okay, so let's go in between our next page of cardstock. Turn the page. And we need coffee dye paper. And another print. So let's go vintage here. Okay, let's do our pink one. Oops. Oops, I'm in the wrong place. There's our pink one, and let's do our green one. So we'll lay those, and I do actually have two extra, so let's decide where we want to put those. Let's get this together here. It's not sitting right. There we go. Okay, so we've got this pink paper, and we've got this coffee dye paper. So let's decide where we want those. I don't want this pink too close to this pink. So let's see where we want to put it. Let's let's break up the screen. We'll put it here. So we'll put the pink here. And that looks nice. That kind of breaks that green on green up. Then I've got an extra sheet of coffee dye paper, so let's see where we want to put that. Let's put it here, because we've got white and white, and then we've got white and pink. So let's put our extra coffee dye paper here. Okay, so those are all of our full sheets that we have together. Now, because I have so much lighter weight paper in here, I do have some extras off to the side here. Um, in case there's room for them, I'll put them in, but not until we're done putting stuff in it. Okay, so now I've got all my little specialty papers here. So let's decide first, let's decide where we want our bag. And typically I try and kind of put that in the middle. So let's see how many pages we have here. One, two, three, four, five, should be nine, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's go about the sixth page. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And that's perfect because this is fairly plain right here. So it could use something. Actually, you know what would be really pretty is let's put this one here and we'll put the bag on the next page. I want this kind of to be more kind of at the top and then on the other side we have this that's really pretty um, let's put our let's put our bag here it really goes with this vintage vibe of this paper so we've got our bag in there okay let's see where we want our Edith Holden page isn't that pretty and I didn't tear that out very straight and I was kind of bummed but I thought oh the torn edge actually looks really pretty. So let's see where we want that. Let's put it on up against that other pink page we have in here. And this green, that's going to be really pretty. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I love that. Okay. So let's see here. These can pretty much go anywhere. These can too, but a doily doesn't look great. I really like to set my doilies off. So let's choose the perfect place for that. I'm thinking on this butterfly here. So let's put our finger there. 
It might look really nice against this vintage paper. We already have something there. I don't want to put it there because it, it'll blend in. Okay, so I'm thinking here. And that looks really pretty with those butterflies. Okay, so now we need to find places. We need to find a place for this. This is so pretty. Okay, let's see. We have something here. Might look really pretty here. Let's see if we have a planer spot that needs some stuff. Got our bag there. Oh, this really needs something. And so does that. And that. Let's put it here. That'll dress that up. Okay, and then I've got, let's see. I've got these things left. Where's my ledger paper? There it is. So I need something here. Let's put this little piece of music here. Okay. So we have something here, here. Let's put, let's put our dictionary here. And this is just how I, how I do it. I just talk to myself through it after I have all my papers pulled and I just see what, um, what I think looks good there. So we'll put this here because I think that music looks really nice against this. Okay, so that spot's free. This spot is free. Let's just put our ledger paper here. This is a great journaling spread. Um, you guys, I've talked about this before, and I do not put pockets and things like that on these pages that are clearly for journaling on. And so, um, so this spread where I put the ledger paper is going to be a really great kind of journaling space in the book. Where did I put it? I want to go back to it. Here. Because I've got coffee dye, white, and then the ledger front and back. And so that's going to be... Oh, I've got this upside down. Glad I looked at it. And so this is a great like journaling spread. Maybe we'll put a sticker or something just to kind of dress it up and give it a little bit of color. Okay. So our signature's together, and it's going to fit in here just like this. And it looks like there's going to be room, but I'm not going to add any more um, paper just yet until I get it decorated. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to wait. Okay, so the next thing, once I have the signature together, is I start looking at what else do I want to add, and it's time for ephemera. Okay, let me check my time on my phone and make sure that I'm not close to um, my 33 minute mark. I've told you guys that before. <laughs> it's like at 33 minutes and 11 seconds, which is four gig of space, my phone will turn off and start another video. So I don't want to go over that. Okay, so here is my bin. I've showed you guys this before. This has all kinds of stuff in it that I pull for my journals, okay? Now, it is not organized. It's kind of organized, but not really. I'm going to try and I think I'll stand up and try and kind of hold this at an angle so you guys can see. So let's start with I don't pull tags and stuff right away, like these little tags and things. I'm looking specifically for envelopes and tuck spots, things like that. Okay, so let's see what we have here. Okay, so I have um, book page corner pocket here, and I've got a banner that would be cute. I'm gonna skip over the tags for right now. That's cute. 
Then this is like a triple pocket. Actually, it's one, two, one, two, three, four. And then you can make it a pocket. So that's like five pockets to hold stuff. Do I want something smaller than that though? No, I'm gonna use that. Oh, this is something new I've made. I really like this. It's a triple pocket. Um, I really like that. So I'm gonna pull that. This is definitely going in. I've got to decorate it. It's a little pouch envelope. So let's pull that. I don't want to use these pockets. Maybe this one. That's really cute. I'm going to pull that. I may or may not use it. Then I have these. That's out of some of the paper that we put in there. This is a journaling spot, so it can take a printed page and literally turn it into journaling spots. So let's pull one of these. Do I have anything that's pink? Doesn't look like it. Let's see what we have. Let's pull this one. And this is literally what I do. I just start going through my bin. Okay, so that's the stuff that's on this side. So we ended up with one, two. That'll be something that tucks in. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we're gonna pull these. Let's go over here and see what I have over here. This side's mostly stuff to like put in pockets. Like these are pockets and these are stuff to put in pockets, but you never know. Oh, see, I have one of these. This is a library, um, this is a library pocket. So let's pull one of these. Definitely, we'll use that. Uh, I don't want to use black. These are things to go in pockets. I've got these other library pockets, but I'll use that only if I kind of run out of stuff because I already have the green one. Oh, this is a pretty envelope. Let's just pull that and put it with our things that we're going to tuck into pockets or clip onto the side. Okay. Okay, I think that's about it. All right, for that bin. Okay, so this is ephemera. We'll decorate and put it in there. Then what I have done is I printed, downloaded and printed all of the Mrs. Cog's fairy images. And I bought two different collections that were eight pages total and it yielded all of these fairy images. So I have this to decorate with. And then I went in my computer where I keep all of my digital files and I went through purposefully um, for you guys all of my folders that were free downloads, okay? And I'll tell you this is mostly Artie Mae's freebies. Okay, and I'm going to link her website below. Um, she has a ton of free digital images that you can download and print for free. And it's artymaze.com. And I'm going to link it below in the description box. So go check that out. She has a ton. And this was all free stuff that I downloaded um, that I keep on my computer. And when I'm doing a journal, I, I look at it and um, I print. Um, what I think will go well. Okay, so there's all these banners and little tickets that I've clipped out. Okay, this is not Artie Maze, but I got this. Um, this was a page of little, and I won't use all of these in the journal, but these are just little um, little journaling cards that I got off the graphicsfairy.com. I'll link that below as well. Tons of free images to download on there. So I thought those were cute little journaling cards. 
All the rest of this is Artie Mae's free stuff. Little bitty postcards to tuck in little pockets. Like I have the, um, where is it? This little thing we're going to decorate here. These are great to go in these little pockets. Just littler things. Little postcards. So I've got some of those. I printed these little mushroom tags because I thought we're doing fairies and they're in like little gardens and they sit on mushrooms and stuff. So I thought these would be cute. And I'm not sure where this came from, but I'm going to use that. Um, here's some more postcards that were um, kind of garden themed with flowers and dragonflies and stuff that I thought would go well. And these are going to be just journaling cards to tuck in pockets and things. And then, oh, here's a couple more little tickets. And then I've got this envelope, this big envelope. When I fold it all up, we're going to stitch this into the middle of our signature. So let me show you. Let me get my bone folder. I fold these in. Fold this up the way it goes here. I like to use these in the middle of my signatures and I'll show you I don't glue them together right away and what I do when I stitch the signature in this is going to be so pretty on this vintage oops let me fold this down so you can see So when I stitch the signature in, I'll leave this open and I'll stitch in here like this as I stitch the signature into the cover. And so then once the signature is stitched into the cover, then I'll fold this over and glue it down and it'll be like a floating envelope in the middle of the signature. So that's what I'm going to do with that. And what I'm going to do with this one, because I thought this one was so cute because of the size of it, this was on the same page as the little mushroom tags. Um, because it's so small, what I'm going to do is uh, use it as a tuck spot on a page. And what I really liked about this one is it's going to work perfect as a tuck spot because it's got little journaling lines on it. I thought that was so cute to do an envelope that way and I didn't fold that quite right, but I'll fix it. Let's let's get this where it should be. There we go. So it's got little journaling lines on the front. So that's going to look really cute as kind of a tuck spot in a corner because it's got little journaling lines and then I'll put a little piece of something in there that you can journal on. Oh, I'm sad that I creased that wrong, but that's okay. Okay, so that's all my ephemera pieces that we're going to be working with. And those will just go, this is the bin that I've started for ephemera pieces and there's my cut off scraps from trimming my paper and all of this stuff's going to go in here so that I can keep all the stuff for my journal separate. Okay. And I'm going to keep the things out that we need to decorate and all the little ephemera pieces can go in here. And so that's where we're at today and so I'm going to stop here today so we have our signature together and all our ephemera pieces together and then what we'll do in the next video is we're going to start decorating our little pockets and tuck spots and we'll decide where they're going to go we'll start gluing things in after we decorate them and it's going to be fun I can't wait to get this started so we're ready we're ready to start really working in here and putting this together so Everybody have a blessed day, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.